J Bell. This is the Gossip Minute, and I have a very special guest. I know it's been a while since I've done, you know, a celebrity interview, but you know, we had to work on some other stuff. But I have a really good guest here. His name is Kareem Grimes. I've been following him for a long time, and when I say he has a resume, he has a resume. He's an actor. He's currently on All American. You may recognize him as Preach on there. Welcome to the show. Hey. hey, you like the applause, I like that. right? I like that. Hey. hey. <laughs> pa, 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 I think I have that too. <laughs> really? Let me see. Oh, no, that's not oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> I almost got you. There you go. There it is. There you go. <laughs> there it We're is. We're not trying to that's bully you. That's what I'm talking about. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being a part of the Gossip uh, Minute thank today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I no appreciate problem. it. No problem. And like we were talking before I started recording, you are actually in the middle of recording, um, not recording, filming All filming, American yeah. right mm-hmm. now, season three. And yeah. so, you know, I'm not even going to uh, lollygag around. <laughs> going to get right to it, huh? Yeah, get right to it because, you know, <laughs> When I first started watching All American, really mm-hmm. good show, um, I was very surprised at how good it was, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of times they put out, you know, these shows with are all African-American cast and mm-hmm. it's kind of like. it can be corny. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. But you have the drama in there. You got the good stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, you got Preach in there. Yeah. With- <laughs> Preach yeah. was a surprise to me. And it's funny because I was like, I was watching some clips to get ready mm-hmm. for our interview. And mm-hmm. I saw in one that your role was originally meant to be one or two episodes. Yeah. Yep. One or two episodes. And now and here you Preach are. Preach was done. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. 14, 15 episodes later. Wow. So why do, you, why do you think um, people have fallen in love with Preach for you to come back? Because, you know. Um, yeah, I think it's just the, I think it's just the realness, um, the layers that Preach has, um, you know, This is a young man who, you know, made a a bad decision, Mm -hmm. um, you know, did some time, but in the process, discovered who he was, educated himself, self-taught, and, uh, you know, is definitely trying to make a difference. Um, And I think there's so many young men and women, black and brown, um, throughout the country that have experienced it or are experiencing it. And knowing that, hey, just because you made a bad decision doesn't mean that your life is over, Um, that there are second chances and being able to, you know, pull yourself, educate yourself while you have that time and try to make a difference and being, you know, especially the relationship between Preach and Coop is like a, a big brother, little sister. So seeing the potential in somebody And knowing that, hey, they may be going down a route that you've gone through Mm -hmm. and to just kind of intercede and stop and say, hey, listen, I've been there. You don't want to do that. This is the route you should take. I see something more than you than than you see in yourself. Um, And I think that's the beauty of who Preach is, is that he's become, you know, a big brother uh, to Coop and kind of like a mentor. And they both need each other. Right. You know, um, so I think that's how people connect to it. And then just, of course, the realness of, of preach, you know, mm-hmm. the authenticity of the character. Uh, like we said earlier, most shows you see corniness, but preach people relate to because, you know, they I grew up with a bunch of preachers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I think that's how people definitely connect, connect with that character. And I'm glad <clears throat> you brought up Coop because, like you mm-hmm. said, you and Coop. Um, Preach and Coop have a dynamic of a brother and sister relationship. Mm-hmm. And I really, it really changed, honestly, because in the beginning of the series, Spencer was the one that was really protecting, trying to protect yeah. Coop and still live, you know, this Beverly Hills life or, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then here comes Preach. You come out of prison because um, mm-hmm. you were in prison. And mm-hmm. then you come back and you kind of take over that role. Mm-hmm. And it's the timing of it is really surreal because now there's this whole stance of protect black women, right? Which is something that has always has supposed to happen, but it's Mm -hmm. more out in the open with social media and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And so my question um, to you in that, 
you know, how how does let me see how I can put this. You know, you, you said earlier that I'm trying to figure out how to how to word this because I don't want to repeat what you just said. But mm -hmm. the relationship between you guys <clears throat> protect black women, you know, why is I, this is what I was going to say. Why is it so important for that message to be out there? You get what I'm saying? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think because black women have been the most disrespected. Um, and I think that it is up to us, um, African-American men, um, to be able to step up to the plate and, and protect, protect our black women mm -hmm. because they put up with so much of our BS um and they stuck by us um and for us to turn our back on them and protecting is not just the physical but just the emotional and the mental you know what i'm saying um and i think as black men we've all been guilty of breaking hearts and things of that nature or misleading but i think all that is encompassing when we say protect black women it's just not more of a physical thing but it's actually coming from a more mental uh, a mental state, um, you know, being able to express ourselves and 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 not lie and and, and and hurt. So, you know, that's for me. That's that's what it is. And in this case, it is. It's a little bit of physical, but it's also mental um, to let Coop know and let Black women know. But especially with the characters, they're like, "Hey, I see something in you," and you know, whatever I want to, whatever I can do to nurture it or to you know, be of, of help, of service, that's that's um, that's in the same vein of, of, of protecting Black women. Whether they make more than you or not, it shouldn't matter at the end of the day. Right. It's protect Black women at all costs. And so what should we expect more of coming out of Preach and Coop's relationship? Oh, I'm going to be honest with you. I really love the dynamic between um, Preach, Coop, and Spencer. Because Spencer mm -hmm, mm -hmm. has started to warm up to you, too, because he mm -hmm, was afraid mm -hmm. of what you might do, yeah, you know, yeah. after the fact of what happened. I think it was within the first season or the first the second, first half. second, second season. Yeah, because yep, the first half yep. of the second mm -hmm. season, you yeah. know, and then how things have changed. And yeah, so, you yeah. know, what should we expect more of? Man, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's crazy you say that because I'm just literally uh, finished having a meeting with the with the showrunner. Uh, and, and Keche Okoro, who's an, a, an amazing woman, black woman, showrunner, leader, captain of the ship. She makes the whole show run. Um, and she was just informing me on just, you know, what what they have, uh, what they have uh, planned for preach. And it's going to be good. That's okay. all I can say without giving too much away. Um, it's definitely it's definitely going to be entertaining uh, like it's always been. Mm -hmm. But you're definitely going to see, you know, uh, you're definitely going to see more preach, but also uh, his uh, his elevation and his development um, of who he is and his rise. So um, without giving too much away, you're definitely you're definitely going to love what they have coming and what we have for preach. Just keep tuning in and watching. But it's going this season, third season. Mm -hmm. If y'all think third season is good, like it's it's getting it it gets better each and every episode. Tonight I'm on, um, so I'm back. So you get to see, you know, what what preach has been, you know, what preach has been dealing with, and with regards to Mo. But just know the evolution of preach is definitely on the rise. Definitely can see it, and I love yeah. it. Um, yeah. I haven't got to catch up yet because you know it's crazy. Mm -hmm. I love to binge watch, binge watch yeah. the mm -hmm. seasons because I want to see everything at once, and so I've gotten mm -hmm. so used to that. But just from what I watched with the first two seasons, and even what I've been reading on Twitter, because you know, yeah, Twitter talk it goes a yeah. little awry. Um, yeah. It's been a lot of mixed messages, like you said, uh, about mm -hmm. the season so far. And so I'm definitely looking forward to watching this. And and you guys have just got renewed for a yeah, for fourth season, season four. Yeah. Dang. And we got a spinoff. And we got a spinoff. Say what? Come on. Give me that. I need that. Okay. Let's Give me that. that. There you go. Hey, there there you go. Is. Hey, 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 hey. Is. Oh, my God. So you got renewed yeah. for a fourth season. And you're getting season. a spinoff. And so are yeah. you, you're a part of the spinoff, correct? 
No, no. I don't know if I'm a part of the spinoff, okay. but I do know that, um, you know, you'll definitely see, uh, you'll see more preach uh, in, in fourth season. Nice. I'm mm-hmm. loving that. And yeah. so this yeah. is what I have to ask next. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Will preach eventually get a love interest? Mm, that's so interesting. Hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, it you is. See preach fall in love. Yeah. I do yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. I mean, I think right now, um and that's what i'm saying like you can binge watch it like right now if you go to the cw app you can Mm -hmm. binge all the episodes up until right now so i think we're episode eight is coming out tonight so you can literally watch episode one through seven right now on the cw um but uh but i think you know right now we're dealing with you know preaching mo which is tyrone's sister in that situation that happened um you know And, you know, we'll see where that goes there. You know, we know there's some history there, so we don't know where that may go, you know. So, uh, you know, without giving too much away for those who haven't uh, who haven't been watching third season. But, yeah, you, you definitely got to watch it. This third season is, is definitely heating up. So preaching mo might get a little spicy, but we're not sure. We'll yet. see. We're not sure. Wait and see. Not, yeah, you got to wait, wait and see. And see. Yep. OK, mm-hmm. got to plays out. All right. OK, we will do mm-hmm. that. And uh, mm-hmm. one last question about All American before we move mm-hmm. on to uh, For the Love of Jason. Um, mm-hmm. I know that I, I think I was watching the same episode, same mm-hmm. podcast, and there was a little bit of talk of Nipsey Hussle being yeah. on All American. Yeah. Um, before he passed away. Yeah. And so I want to kind of get an idea because I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you are born and bred from Los Angeles, yeah. California. Yeah. I'm born, born and raised in Inglewood, California. Grew up around South Central, Lamert Park, Crenshaw area, uh, live in Baldwin Hills. So, yeah, definitely. Right. All very, in very all in that area. Yep. That's, that's all you. So, you know, mm-hmm. so Nipsey was very big, obviously, in that mm-hmm. area. And so the mm-hmm. legacy, the legacy that he left behind and whatnot is mm-hmm. big for everybody else. Mm-hmm. But how big of an influence was he to you? And his legacy that he left behind. Um, I mean, here's inside. I mean, I met Nipsey before the world knew who Nipsey was. Right. Um, I met Nipsey, a young Nipsey, when, you know, he was staying at his grandmother's house and he just had a short haircut, you know what I'm saying? And because I interviewed him, I'm trying to find that interview. I, I Some friends of mine, my friend Danny uh, and, and my boy Bird, we had a show called Hip Hop on Blast where we interviewed local artists and Nipsey Hussle was one of those artists. So I'm trying to find that. I'm trying to find that interview. But uh, to me, it was, it, you know, like I said, I, I'm, I'm, I was on Nip before the world knew who Nip was. Um, and the legacy that he's left is, you know, is a big one. It's, it's, you know, considered a blueprint for, you know, those young brothers who, you know, are still in the street and, and want to make a difference um, within their community. Um, you know, my last, my last, interaction with nip was at um coachella you know uh and i was able to you know chop it up with him and you know and and congratulate him on his success um you know so that memory i definitely take uh but yeah i mean you know it's it's still where i live at in the uh in ball hills crenshaw area there's still a big poster of him on the side of this uh ball hills crenshaw mall so every time you go down king boulevard you literally see his poster all day every day and it's uh, just a constant reminder of you know the impact the young brother made in the, in, the, in, the, in the community you know um and as far as wanting to you know see beyond that you know build building businesses and you know and, and dealing with stem research and cryptocurrency and the whole nine so you know he's definitely planted a seed in these young brothers and sisters out here Mm-hmm. I know, like I see it all the time because you know Big Sean just dropped his new video, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Deep Rivers. Mm-hmm. Deep, that's Nipsey one Hussle. of my favorite songs. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, um, and you see like how much of an influence he was just around the community itself, mm-hmm. with all the murals mm-hmm. and yep. you know the sayings and things like that. So you know it's, it's nice to get an uh, inside track because you mm-hmm. hear so many outside tracks. You hear you yeah. know gossip columns, but you never mm-hmm. really know how much he influenced California and the world. Yeah. As yeah. a whole. Yeah. Um, and so you hear from somebody that is within the circle. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely. And so as I talk about one legend, I want to mm-hmm. move on into another legend. And so I was watching that same interview. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's getting a lot of information. No, actually, this uh-huh. was another interview. Mm-hmm. Um, it was with Mike and Donnie. And mm-hmm. talking about John Singleton. Man. And mm. your first role ever uh, yeah. working on Boys in the Hood. In the Hood, yeah. And so I think now I recognize you on there. <laughs> you know, you watch it as a young one. You're not, you're not yeah. really looking at that stuff. But you go back and you're like, I know him. Right. <laughs> Where have I seen him from? <laughs> Where have I seen right, him from? Right. And yeah. so, and it's such a minor role, but still, you got to work with a legendary actor such as John yeah. Singleton. And so, I want to ask you, like, what, what was some of the biggest lessons you learned, you know, working with him as as a kid? Yeah. Um. Just you know, John was all about community. You know, um, being in the business, doing extra work, leading up to this. Um, you, you rarely saw any African American people on set. It may be one or two, um, but with John, you know, I was able to see that there was a, a, a DP, which is a director of photography, who was black, Mr. Charles E. Mills. You know, uh, grips and set designers and hair and makeup were black, and like John Singleton hired people within the community. You know, so that was the first and foremost uh, thing that I learned. Uh, but also John was, you know, he, he wrote about and, and, and shot stuff that he lived, you know, um, you know, being a young man from South Central, um, you know, so that and, you know, just uh, I just learned so much from him as far as just, you know, what it takes to make a film and you know, the behind the scenes and the pre-production and, and things of that nature. Uh, so I definitely learned a lot from John, you know, part of, you know, who I am and, and my career, I owe it to John because he saw something in me to, you know, give me, you know, a couple of lines and those, you know, the, that right there sparked, you know, um, my career. And, you know, I'm, I'm still, I'm still in it, I'm still doing it. And I love what I do. And, you know, I owe a big part because of John and, and, you know, him seeing something in me. And you've played in some pretty big shows. You played in SWAT. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think mm-hmm. of all the names. It was so many of them. But I know you yeah. worked with SWAT, like SWAT, CSI. Yeah, yeah, worked with Shamar Moore. Um, you know, yeah. worked with George Clooney, you know. Right. So, yeah, yeah, a well, lot. You- You've had right. some big people around you and mm-hmm. done some pretty big things. And so mm-hmm. I want to ask you, too, like, what is the, I guess, the best set that you've ever been on? Mm. Definitely a John Singleton set. Um, yeah. it was, it's really like a family. Because John usually hired the same crew. Um, I think the second, um, I have three. Uh, the second would definitely be All-American. Um, a, a bunch of amazing, talented um, actors, um, and then also crew. Um, we're just one big family. And then third is for the love of Jason. You know, it was literally like going to work with your friends every day, like literally hanging out with your friends every day. Um, and that was that was that was a blessing. And I like the fact that you brought up for the love of Jason because that was mm-hmm. coming up next. No, oh, okay. I was, <laughs> I was watching. The, yeah, good timing, uh-huh. right? Good segue. Mm-hmm. Um, I was watching the show, mm-hmm. and you got B.J. Britt, who was from Being yeah. Mary Jane, um, mm-hmm. and Jack mm-hmm. A. Harry. You working with some yep. more legends here? Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, the one thing I, I realized is how diverse you are as an actor, because mm. you go from you know being preach which is mm-hmm. becoming a pretty big role. And then you're playing yeah. the role of Eric, who just got married. Yeah. Um, and I think that you, your character still has a little bit of cold feet trying to figure out this yeah. whole marriage thing. Yeah, so absolutely. Like you're, you know, you're figuring all this <laughs> stuff out. Um, yeah. how, how do you kind of set your way into thinking, you know, breaking it up a little bit? Because you know, yeah, sometimes character. people, yeah, sometimes people get stuck into one role. Yeah, I think for me, it's just I wanted to diversify. I just wanted to be a chameleon uh, for me to where, like you said, I I never want to be pigeonholed or stuck into just that one character. 
And I think for me, that's why I've been blessed to be able to be in the business, um, to learn from some of the best. Um, and, you know, like I said, go out for things that are outside of, you know, who I am. Um, but at the same time, each character, I bring a little bit of me to each character. You just have to. That's just what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just wanting to be diversified, just to diversify my portfolio as far as just an, an actor, just be a chameleon. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. I can be this, I can be that, I can be this. Because that's the whole point of being an actor is make believe. You know, exactly. being able to take on a character and people not see Kareem, but actually see the character that you play. And it's definitely your season because now For the Love yeah. of Jason also got renewed yeah. for season two. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So Super excited. You get mm-hmm. another one of these. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> and so are, are we expecting more episodes for season two? Because I see that yeah. season one was only six episodes. Very yeah, good yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we, you know, we, we don't, we, uh, hopefully we start shooting in November uh and uh yeah hopefully we get some more episodes um you know besides the six that i think we did do six or seven uh but yeah we definitely gonna you know give you guys you know more and uh and definitely entertain uh and i think we left off we left off on a good note so we definitely are going to give you more uh you know more than what you guys asked for and, and keep you guys fully entertained so yeah, big shout out to uh, All Black, AMC, and, uh, you know, Trailwood Berry, uh, BJ Britt, Layla Odom, Jack A, Carl Gilliard, uh, Layla Odom, Brady yeah, Evans, Evans. And, and every, everybody, yeah. Yeah, yeah Brady Evans yeah. is on there. Jessica, she stays working, yeah. too. Yeah. You guys Brady are working, working out there. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, a cute, it's a cute show. I love it. Um, I think it's yeah. very, very adorable. It definitely ties into the times of yeah. being young and getting married, um, yeah. being single and trying to figure out your whole life. Yep, uh, all absolutely. Within that. And so I want to yeah. ask I want to ask you next, uh, mm-hmm. when Kareem is not working, which seems mm-hmm. to be all the time. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like to do for fun? Oh, uh, man, work out. Um, definitely like to travel. Um you know, I mean, be, since everything's closed down, I, you know, I like to watch a, a good movie or a documentary, uh, you know, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of low key, you know, um, with just, just how I move, you know, but definitely love working out. Um, that's, you know, that's kind of like my, my me time, um, my, my stress reliever. Um, but yeah, that a movie, you know, some good food, you know, travel as well, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I like to do. Nice. And give back. And give back as much as I can. Right. I saw you were a human, uh, humanitarian. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I I was trying to find out what organization you were, like, giving back yeah, it's to. Yeah, it's called, called My Friends. My Friends House LA. org. Okay. And uh, we feed the homeless. We've been doing it for 11 years now. And uh, we do it, you know, right in the heart of Skid Row, downtown Los Angeles. And, uh, yeah, every Wednesday from 12 to about 1, 2 o'clock, uh, we give back. And uh, that's that's what I've been. Uh, I've been a part of that, along with uh, Tiffany Rose, who's the founder. And, uh, yeah, that's 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 my that's my Wednesday. My Wednesdays uh, are uh, usually filled with that if I'm not working. Uh, but, you know, that's that's where I'm usually at. Nice. Okay. And I want to, I want to know, like, how important is it for you to give back in your own community? You know, not too many of us. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so important. It's it's so important. I think uh, for me, you know, people have, you know, deposited into my life and given back. So, you know, I think it's only right that we pay it forward. Um, I think that's part of the reason why I think everybody is put on this earth is to find their purpose, but to also give back. Um, you know, so that's, that's what I live by. I think, you know, part of, you know, why my name is Kareem is, is, is Arabic. It means noble one, but it also means, you know, uh, generous, you know, so I try to live by my name and, you know, give back, um, you know, as much as I can, whether it's information, whether it's, you know, just positivity, speaking into somebody's life, you know, um, that's just, that's just how I was raised. Um, just to always give back because, you know, um, 
you know, God has given us the ability to, you know, open our eyes, be in our right mind, you know, have our purpose, <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, we can at least, you know, give some of our time or energy or whatever it is to give back to, you know, to people. Just help your, your fellow your fellow human being, human being, man, woman, child, the whole nine. I love it. And I, I, it's going to be random. Mm-hmm. Go from talking about giving back, but I really yeah, yeah. would love to know, like, what is your ideal movie or TV role? Mm, that's good. Um, I think it. Uh, I think it gives hand in hand with uh, comedy and drama. Mm. I think you know I would like to have a little bit of both. You know, um, but yeah, that would be ideal for me. Something that gives you a little comedy, but you know, also. Or heavy on the drama side as well. Okay. Another mm-hmm. question for you: If you mm-hmm. could, if you could choose to play anyone in a mm-hmm. biopic, who mm. would you choose, dead or alive? Ooh, that's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, I mean, you know, well, I had went out for the easy E role. Oh, for straight out of Compton. Oh, I think he froze. Oh, don't tell me he froze. Let's pause. He froze for a second. I had to pause. Oh, no. Okay. okay. So you just pick up All where right. you left off. I asked you okay. your ideal person. You said that um, you tried out for the easy role. Yeah. And, I asked and you Jason Mitchell. At, okay. Jason Mitchell, he got it. He did a really good job. Uh, yes. But there's also, there's a there's a baseball player. Um, this guy named uh, Glenn Burke. Glenn Burke was a, uh, a, a major league baseball player who came out of the closet. Um, he was a gay baseball player, black male. Um, and I just thought that his story uh, was just so uh, interesting, you know, being that he played baseball from 52 to 95. No, no, I'm sorry. He played, he played baseball in the 70s. I'm tripping. He died in 95. Um, he played baseball in the 70s. And at that time, you know, it was, you know, you rarely heard any sports players coming out. Um, but, you know, I, I definitely would like to to uh, play him in a uh, in his biopic. So because um, I think it's I think his story is very interesting, you know, um, and uh, I love baseball, you know. I love baseball and basketball and football, but baseball is one because my dad played and, you know, my dad, they said my dad was really good. He could have gone pro. So that's how I got into baseball. But um, I would definitely like to play, you know, uh, Glenn, Glenn Burke. So do you see yourself doing more producing as your career grows, seeing you have this type of interest uh, to play some yeah. role? I think, I think, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm producing a project independently for a while um and uh i'm definitely want to i think anything that has to do with this business um i definitely want to be able to touch but definitely producing and directing is is the next the next evolution the next step okay and last question Mm -hmm. um most inspiring movie this year Mm, most inspiring movie. That's good. Um, man. Um, I definitely like Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. That was good. Um, and The Black Messiah, the Fred Hampton. I thought Fred you Hampton. might mention that because yeah. <laughs> of the fact yeah. it was such a, such a big movie for everybody mm-hmm. to know the story of Fred Hampton. Yeah. Um, yep. And the fact that the dynamic between Daniel Kaluuya and uh, Lakeith Stansfield yeah. is definitely one for the books. Because mm-hmm. I mentioned, as I was watching, I was like, you've seen these guys together in a lot of stuff from Get mm-hmm. Out. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I can't remember what, it was another movie I think they did together. And I can't think of it right now. But they No, I think a, it was just Get Out. Was it? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the dynamic between the two is... Yeah. Is that something that you look for, like, in in the next roles that you play? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think any actor, 
you know, would 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 love to to uh, you know attach themselves to to positive or just pieces that definitely educate that are just powerful um, because it allows you as an artist to be able to flex your muscle, um, you know, to dig deep into you know characters and be able to tell a story. Um, so yeah, I definitely look forward, you know, to to being attached to projects, you know, like that. And working with people like, you know, Daniel Kalua and Lakeith Sanfield. Well, thank you so much. That that is that's all I have. All right. <laughs> well, hey, hey, hey. That's what I'm talking about. This is great. I had fun. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I always like to make sure people have fun and, and you know, get for yeah. answers and things like that. Yeah. Uh, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to do mm-hmm. this with me, because obviously the Gossip Minute sounds so salacious, but it's really yeah, like yeah. just getting to know, <laughs> yeah. you know, celebrities, entertainers, kind of like what mm-hmm. they're doing, what they got going yeah. on, that sort of thing. Um, and so, yeah, I definitely appreciate you taking this time to do this. Uh, before, yeah, no we, before we go, mm-hmm. All American is out right now, season three. Yeah. Yep. In the middle of filming. Um, yep. And when is the season finale? Because you guys started in January. Uh, no, we actually started in... Was it early February? We started, no, we started in... Uh, dang, I'm sorry. What was it? It was I know it was last year. Was it January? I think it was January. Or October. October is when we came back on. I can't even remember. It's been... Yeah. <laughs> It's been crazy. But yeah, you can definitely tap in now. It's uh we come on every Monday at eight. Um, and that's uh on the West Coast. Um, so definitely check your local listings. Um, if you do miss it, you can download the CW app, which is free, and it streams the very next day. So if you haven't caught up, you can catch up now to seven episodes, which are on the CW right now. Um, tonight I'm on, so you definitely want to check that out, see what Preach has been up to, um, and, uh, yeah. Exactly. You want to make sure you watch for Preach. Let's see what happens mm-hmm. with Preach and Mo. Yeah, absolutely. Will there be a love story, or will there be a, right, lot, or, a lot of yeah, things going yeah, on? Yeah, uh, some drama or some love, we don't know, but you got to tap in and keep, and keep watching. Exactly. For the love of Jason starts filming in November. And do yeah. you have any other projects coming down the pipeline, sir? Uh, I'm working on some things right now. Uh, definitely. I'm working on some tech because I'm in the tech space. So um, I have an app out. Uh, it's called Face Pop, which is uh, only on iOS. It allows you to create uh, self-made emojis featuring your face. That's out. Um, I'm also working on um, a platform that is going to be the Black Zoom. Uh, so we have Zoom, but this will be the Black Zoom for us, by us, um, with with a lot more to offer. Okay. Um, so I'm working on that. And then we uh, also have an app that uh, we're going to be able to be in the same space as Clubhouse, but giving you a little bit more. Uh, than audio so uh those are those are the things that i'm working on that um that will be uh coming to you guys real soon we definitely need more black people in the tech space in tech world absolutely yes absolutely not absolutely. me but other people because yeah 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 only do so much with tech as you can see right. <laughs> that's got stuff exactly. sitting around. again exactly. thank you so much kareem make sure you're watching yeah. him on all american his episode airs tonight and you're gonna see more of him in season four coming up but we definitely want to see more of him in season three if you absolutely are watching okay until next time guys you enjoy the rest of your day your week your year stay masked up and stay safe see you there it is